Hi, are you a marathon runner or half marathon runner wanting to find the balance between training and life so that you suffer less fatigue? Have you ever wondered what exactly triggers tiredness in your training that spills out into your everyday life? In today's video, we're diving into what can cause fatigue in your training and how to best recover more quickly. So first of all, we've really got to look at what triggers fatigue during prolonged physical activities, such as marathon training. That would be the big overview. And basically, it's insufficient food from food sources. So are you eating enough and are you eating the right foods? Inadequate hydration levels. Now, a lot of runners will look at this purely when they're running, but it also, you have to look at it throughout the day, you know, throughout your life. What is your hydration like throughout the day? And the other factor is poor recovery and rest time. They are the big three. So let's have a look at them in more detail. So first stop is nutrition for energy. It's pretty obvious that if you're not eating enough to propel you forward, then you're running like a car on empty or nearly empty. And also using the car analogy, you're running on the last dregs of fuel, which is never gonna give you the likelihood of the kind of results that you would require. So what you should be looking at is eating some complex carbs before runs particularly. When I say complex carbs, people demonize carbs, but carbs are carbs, but you've got carbs that come from natural food, real food, and then you've got carbohydrates that might come from a pizza or a bagel. I'm not gonna de demonize those foods, but they are not exactly the same as perhaps eating some oats or real food prior to your runs. Now, when I say prior, I'm not always a massive fan of eating just before I go out the door. Some runners, they're really big on that. But try and look at a 24 hour window. So for example, as I'm making this video today, it's a Monday. Now, I don't run on a Monday, not very often. What you should be thinking about is, what are you eating today? So for me, Monday, that's going to either help or hinder your run. So am I getting those complex carbs in today? What did I have for breakfast? Did I have some oats, perhaps, with some blueberries on it? What am I going to have for lunch that is going to help build up those carbohydrate stores so that when you go out for the run tomorrow, you're basically like the car, well fueled for the run. Now, you don't have to get completely obsessed about the food in that respect of what's winning that plate wars. There's nothing wrong, in my opinion at least, you've got to enjoy life, you've got to have some food you enjoy and love. And anything you do with diet is much more better if you can do it for prolonged periods of time versus short periods of times where something you start a diet and then you stop it and you start it. So the main take away from this is I just want you to be aware of the different types of carbs, the complex ones, basically real food, and the difference between that and what I rather rudely call a crappy carb. So, you know, I love a pizza now and again, but I always call that a crappy carb, and I tend to have those kind of carbohydrates more after I've run big runs, you know, longer runs. My body kind of obviously will utilize that a lot more efficiently than if I'm just having it as a standard food source. Also, hydration is another factor. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I just don't mean rehydrating while you're running, not just rehydrating post-run, though those are both important. But what is your hydration like? Yet again, if you think of it like a 24-hour window, what is that like 
over that time. So like, yeah, again, I'm gonna run tomorrow. What's my hydration been like today? I'd have to tell you, not been that great today. So you've got to think about the fact is that we're made mainly up of water. What is your hydration like? If it's something that you're just drinking the odd cup of tea or coffee, nothing wrong with your cup of tea or coffee, but if you're not kind of meeting some level of hydration, and I'm going to avoid telling you exactly how much liquid to drink because I'm not sure that that is very helpful. Everyone's going to be slightly different. Everyone's locations are going to be slightly different. But just being aware, from the moment you get up to the moment you go to bed, what is your hydration like? You know, are you utilizing some form of awareness so that you drink enough liquid and rehydrate post run as well? And if we're talking about post run, also remember to eat some protein rich foods just after that window of finishing a run. So about first 45 minutes to an hour. I'm a great fan of a protein drink. Put your favorite protein in, either plant-based or whey protein or even milk. Depending on your weight loss goals, if you have any, I bung in a couple of bananas, some cashew butter, whisk it all up and get that down me really quickly within the first you know, 30 minutes of me finishing. Because if you're doing your marathon or half marathon training right, you're gonna get these micro tears, you know, in the respect of your body. Your body is gonna be pushed and it's adapting. When you get those changes, it's when you stop, when you start to recover, your body starts to kind of, in a micro sense, at a cellular level, start to put you back together again. <laughs> you wanna help that process the best you can, and the best way you can do that is by making sure you get some protein in pretty quickly after your run. Another factor is getting proper rest and recovery. And you know, you probably heard this a thousand times before. Rest and recovery comes in all different shapes and sizes. So for example, you know, you can have some form of recovery in the actual activity you're doing. Are you doing your easy runs too hard, for example? Are you doing your speed runs? If you've got, say, a 40 minute speed run, speed session, how much of that session is made up of actual speed? In my opinion, it should be a sprinkling. It should be surrounded by a warm up, a warm down, and if it's intervals, times to actually recover in a lower zone, say a zone one. So the overall period of high intensity, say zone four or five, may only be six or seven minutes. That in effect is a form of recovery because you are kind of pinpointing the intensity of your running, but you're not dragging that on for too long. And also like if you're doing say, what we would call a building run, say 40, 45 minutes, zone two running, Are you maintaining that at a zone two? Or are you drifting into what we call, you know, a controllably hard run that you do, you think is fairly easy, but actually it's too hard for long periods of time. And what you actually end up with is too much fatigue and you end up feeling tired, grumpy, and that spills over into your life beyond running so you've got that kind of recovery then you've got recovery days are you taking recovery days especially if you're an older runner take full recovery days utilize very low intensity forms of recovery on those days walking things like that but things that you could easily talk while doing and are very very low intensity Use relaxation techniques post run. Not everybody wants to become a major meditator, but even just sitting and moving your body from fight or flight, which it's probably moved into running, into more, you know, easily relaxed state, your kind of digestive state. The if you're looking at it from an evolutionary point of view, you've gone out there, you've 
been a hunter and gatherer, though you've only just gone for a run, but you've now done your work. Back in history, we actually were more relaxed more often. We would do what we needed to do, then relax, find a way to get to a point where our bodies at a good homeostasis point of view. So you can do that just by breathing, relaxing your eyes. I've done videos on this before, but you know, when you're in fight or flight, you're very, very vision, your vision's on one thing. Relax your eyes, make sure that you've got some peripheral vision. Don't do this while you're driving. Just breathe in, breathe out. Go for a bath with Epsom salts in. You know, do something that really brings you into that relaxed state. Television isn't always the ideal thing because if you're watching certain things, your body can still move into that fight or flight state. But doing this type of thing, particularly before you sleep, yet again brings you to the most obvious area of recovery is sleep get into a sleep routine, find ways to get good hours of sleep. I mean, everybody will argue with me on what they need. I think pretty much scientifically, most meat people require seven or eight hours of sleep. They may not feel they need it, but the older you get, the more important that becomes for your recovery. Physical conditioning. Now, why would I put physical conditioning? Because Basically, marathon and a half marathon training is physical conditioning. You are building up your body. But if you go above and be, it's a very difficult balance. You've got to not go above and beyond what your body can do now, but you've also got to be able to push it far enough that it adapts. So increasing training duration intensity at steady levels, the way that I would do this when I'm coaching is one, make sure I've assessed where the runner is now. What is their most recent long run? What have they been doing strength training wise? What, you know, how has their recovery been? Look at all those factors and then put in front of them what I feel that they can cope with at the moment and then assess it as we go along. Because yes, you're gonna to have to stress the body to get improvements, but you've got to get that balance right. If you don't, you will become overtrained, you will become grumpy, and a lot of runners are running, when they come to us as runners that want to be coached, they're primarily the issues are these. They're either their training is plateaued, they are getting tired and fatigued quickly and not making progress and their recoveries are bad and broadly speaking a lot of that comes down to that and I've said this many times but they're running their easy runs too hard and they're not running their speed sessions hard enough or in the correct way as I mentioned earlier in the video so physical conditioning is what it's all about marathon and half marathon training how you do that, how you increase that, is the real difference between you finding that your life is out of balance with your running, that you know, you're know you constantly tired, you're not feeling the benefits of your training, and quite the opposite, it's encroaching in on your life. And that's why when I put physical conditioning as an important aspect, because of course that's what marathon and half marathon training is, but it's, as Eric Morgan once said, you know, you can be playing all the right notes, but not necessarily in the right order. Something else I want to add is to kind of, if you are really struggling, you know, with your marathon and half marathon training, and you're kind of at this point where you're kind of thinking, it's just such an uphill slog. I mean, I've obviously shared quite a bit with you already, but, just want to add in a few extra bits. What are the logistics of your training? You know, how much can you integrate them into your daily life? I, for one, I know it's not always possible, but I run from my hair salon when I finish work. 
Now I've got various routes I can take off, but it means that time I get home, I haven't got to run. The running's done, and that's an integration into my life. Some people may be able to run earlier in the day before life gets in the way. These are little things that you can utilize to get the best from your running on a daily basis. It's also looking at to make sure that you don't become too rigid with your training plan. It's the map, it's not the territory. And I often say to runners we coach, you know, that's the map, you are the compass. You know, we are guided by you. The trouble is most runners don't always have the self-awareness. So you need to look at overall stress in your life, not just running stress or life stress, it's all stress. Now, marathon and half marathon training are there to design to stress you out. I mean, not as a person particularly, but they are there to mentally strengthen you and they're also there to physically strengthen you. Strengthen you. And, and you are meant to be able to run fatigued and some of your training is designed to do that. But then you throw in, say, you've got a very stressful week at work or you have something with the children or the grandchildren. All those factors you have to take on board you don't want to just kind of separate the two completely, go, well, I've got my running box and I've got my life box and the both are separate. Your body doesn't recognize that. Your body only recognizes effort and stress as a thing overall. So sometimes you may have to adapt your training plan. If you've got a lot of stress or a lot going on outside of running, then you may have to drop the intensity or duration of some runs. And don't be afraid to do that. You may be times where your running is at a stage, or you know, later on in your plan, where if possible, you know, reduce stress and strains outside of life. I know this isn't always possible, but where possible, you know, if you've got that big long run near the end of your training, try not to build too much around that weekend where possible. You know, acknowledge that that is going to be mentally and physically to some degree stressful and try and build out from that. And then applying all the principles that I've shared with you so far on rest and recovery, physical conditioning, nutrition for energy, you should find that you've got more control over your marathon and half marathon training and that means ultimately it doesn't spill out into the rest of your life and make you feel like you're out of control. Hope you enjoyed the video. I just wanted to share something with you. If you're a half marathon and marathon training, you're finding that it's hard to get a predictable results from it, or as we've mentioned in this video, you find it quite stressful trying to find the right balance or that your generic training plan doesn't seem to fit in with your life. This is the sort of things we cover in my free 10 day workshop, the Marathon Map. We cover these kinds of subjects and what we do is we take your generic running plan over the 10 days and we say, well, okay, what could you do different to make that work better for you? And we have um, videos and coaching to help you progress your training plan. Now you might be thinking, Hayley, what's your evil plan with this? It's quite obvious. At the end of the 10 days, I make an offer to join our foundations program, which is eight weeks to really lay the foundations for great marathon or half marathon training. But you're under no, you know, you don't have to do that. I haven't going to put a gun to your head or anything. So you can really gain, if you enjoy my YouTube videos, you can really gain a little bit more insight, a little bit more coaching, takes you to the next level. Then at the end of the 10 days, it's your choice what you do. If you're interested, somewhere around this video will be the link to join. As of making this video, the next Marathon Maximizer is on Monday the 10th of July it starts, but we will be running other dates after that. Anyway, thanks a lot. If you've got any comments, please comment below and I look forward to hearing them. Bye for now.